Hello crafty friends, welcome to another everyday inspiration video. Today's card is inspired by this photograph, another one that I took on a recent trip to the Lost Gardeners of Heligan in Cornwall. I loved the colour palette and stature of these salvia plants, so I thought I'd try to recreate them in a card using flower dyes and distress oxides. To start the process, I cut three pieces of smooth white cardstock from which to make my flowers. With the first two pieces of cardstock, I ran them through my die cutting machine with my flower dies using the embossing sandwich. I didn't want to cut the flowers just yet. I just wanted to emboss them onto the card. So I did that twice. And then on one piece, I took some picked raspberry distress oxide and gently brushed it over the embossed flowers. And I chose to do it this way, embossing and then inking, because the embossing catches the colour in a way that's different from if I just brushed it on and then I cut my flowers out. I think you get a much more variegated an interesting inking this way. I did that with picked raspberry which matched the pink in the photograph and then I did the other embossed panel with wilted violet because that matched the purple. Once those were done I put the dye back over the embossed flowers. It was really easy to do because it kind of locked itself into place and then I ran those two panels through my die cutting machine and that gave me lots of multi-size flowers with some lovely blending that I could then construct into double layer flowers. So I sorted all my flowers out into size and then I stuck a smaller flower on top of a larger flower, twisting the top flower so that the petals were offset. The very smallest flowers I left as single flowers and I did that with the pink ones and the purple ones but not the white ones and you'll see why in a bit. Once those were dry enough to work with I started constructing my tall thin salvia like plants. I know these flowers don't look like salvia I'm just taking inspiration from the salvia rather than trying to capture them realistically. So I popped some of my glue onto my glass mat, dipped the flowers in and then arranged them up the card in a kind of tall thin pyramid so they were looking quite statuesque. I did my pink flower first and then my purple flower and then the white flowers I just tucked in between the pink and purple plants so that they looked like there was a white flower behind them. And this was why I didn't bother creating double layer flowers with the white card, just because not enough of them would be visible between the pink and the purple and they'd be too bulky to kind of tuck in around and about. Single layer work best for the white ones. To create the tall thin pyramid shapes, I started with the biggest flowers at the bottom. Then I brought in some medium sized flowers and then I brought in the little flowers to fill out the shape. And I think that worked really well at creating some quite elegant plants. Speaking of elegant plants, I'd love to know what your favourite flowers are. I think mine have to be lilies. I love the trumpet shape of them and the smell is just divine. So let me know what your favourite flower is in the comments. I did want to bring in some of the green that was in the photograph that inspired this card. So I took Pine Needles Distress Oxide, I believe it was, added it in a blotchy fashion to another piece of smooth white cardstock. I wasn't bothered about getting a perfect smooth blend because I die cut out a leafy branchy shape and then snipped all the leaves off so that I could tuck them around and about my tall thin purple pink and white flowers. So really, even if I'd gone for a variegated look on these leaves, you wouldn't have been able to tell because there's such tiny little bits peeking out around my flowers. 
Again, I put some glue on my glass mat, dipped my leaves in and then tucked them in where I felt they looked natural-ish and filled out the flowers. For my stems, I used the same green ink, smushed a little bit on my mat, picked it up with a wet paintbrush and painted it on. Again, trying to get it to look kind of natural, but not worrying if it didn't look like a salvia stem. For my sentiment, I stamped Enjoy Your Special Day in black ink on a piece of smooth white cardstock and die cut it out with a stitched banner die. I then used a piece of craft foam to stick this over the stems underneath the flowers on my card panel. To finish off my flowers, I gave them flower centers using gold nouveau drops. These are pale gold and I felt they worked really nicely with the pastely colors. And that is this card finished. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the process of going from an inspirational photograph to a finished card. And I hope it's given you some ideas of things that you can do with the inspiration that you see all around you. If it has, please do leave a thumbs up, let me know in the comments, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another video. Thanks for watching, bye for now.